do what it do. do. Sitting with the crew, I to get some food. I see you looking like you do. Had to make a move, make a move. So I want to thank you guys for your continued support of my YouTube channel. I really couldn't have done it without y'all. If you want to send any donations, please send it to the new Cash App at the top. And if you have any video requests, please send a donation. Thank you. Peace and love. Hey, it's your boy, Nid Almighty, aka the Global Dark Skin Ambassador. With my 7th slash 8th Rikers Island story. And we're going to keep it real like this. During my tenure on Rikers Island, I was on Rikers Island from March 2008 until August 2009, where I then went to upstate New York to complete my bid. I've had as many fights as I would say, I probably had 20, 30 fights. Um, probably, probably eight to 12 of those fights were one-on-one -on -one fights. The rest, either I got jumped or I was jumped with somebody. Being a man comfortable in my own skin, I could definitely admit that honestly, I lost more fights than I won. I mean, um, I definitely did. You know, I'm not this guy who who who, who claims to uh, be this big gangster, uh, this big super kung fu fighter, weaves like Mayweather, punches like Ali. I'm not that guy. Um, I'm not that coordinated. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I could play a little bit of football, but all in all, I never was really an athlete. Um, I could run fast, but there ain't no way you could run on Rikers Island. You know, um, when I went to jail, the only thing I had was my word. My word is born, and all I had was guts. Um, there were times where I had fear and I still had to man up and deal with whatever I had to deal with. Um, like I said, I probably lost more fights than I won, but when you a man and you make decisions, well, when you're a boy becoming a man like I was, cause I was 17 when I went to Rikers Island and you're faced with adversity, you either gonna curl up into a fetal position and be a bitch, or you gonna let your nuts hang. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, I probably couldn't fight at all. Like I was one of those, I was always one of those kids where, where I lacked in a uh, combat skill, I made up for with craziness. Um, anybody that really knows me, they know that um, I'm a very calm, cool, collected dude most of the time. You know, I can be loud at times, but you know, I'm, I'm mostly calm, cool, and collected until I get angry and then things happen. You know, I live by a moral code is this. It's like, I don't care if it's, I don't care if it's the biggest dude on the block. I mean, the biggest dude around, the smallest dude around, the most dangerous dude around. Um, it's as simple as this. I lead with love. I lead with respect. And if you disrespect me, then being that I know I led with respect, I have the right and personal authority to deal with that however I want to deal with that. Um, I've always been a person who... I'm the type of dude who, it don't matter if I feel like you could beat me in a fight or not because I'm gonna come at you first and I'm gonna hit you with a one to three punch combo and I'm gonna see what happens after that. Um, I might knock you out. And if I don't, hey, I still got an advantage because I hit you first. So now we fighting 
and it's on, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm making this video just to make it clear that for any young men that's watching, it's not about trying to be the toughest all the time, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I was a person who I didn't have to involve myself in the streets, but I involved myself in the streets because I grew up in a fatherless home. And when you a young man, you wanna become part of something. I always had heart. Me having heart is what let me, not necessarily heart, but I would say a combination of heart, stupidity, and bravery is what led me to be in the streets and what led me to do the things that I did in the streets. And when I got there, I had to be me. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, I beat I beat dudes in the fight who fight better than me based off of the simple fact that I learn what they do and I figure out a way to win. Um, I beat I beat people in fights by <laughs> letting them swing and letting them get tired because they trying to punch like they Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying? They trying to punch like they Ali. I won fights by letting them get tired and then I corner you in that cell and then I break you down. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, I've won fights by being a survivalist. I've won fights by, hey, you're too much bigger than me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit you over the head with something. It's as simple as that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I learned a lot of different lessons on Rikers Island. And the most important lesson I learned is that there comes a time in a man's life where you either gonna fight or you gonna exercise your flight. And when you lead a type of life that puts you in the penal system, there's no way you can fly too. You just gotta fight. You gotta survive, you know what I'm saying? Um, I've seen the softest niggas come in and, and, and get their ranking up, you know what I'm saying? Um, I was one of those guys who I thought I was tougher than I actually was until I got to Rikers Island and I had to really be tough. When you out in the town and 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 you might be a part of a little street gang or you got a little clique and y'all running around jumping people every day, punching people in the face every day like I was doing, you don't realize how much guts you really gotta have to really stand on your own feet until you do something that lands you in Rikers Island, jail. And once I realized and proved to myself how tough I was or how much heart I had, it humbled me. It humbled me because I felt like I have nothing to prove, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I actually got better at fighting while I was on Rikers Island, you know what I'm saying? Um, you gotta lose to be able to win. You gotta be bad at something to learn how to be good at something. You know what I'm saying? Um, being on Rikers Island, even though it's a negative place, it helped me humble myself and uh, think more with logic and less emotion because when the wrong emotional move in jail could cost you your life. And um, although I wish I never went to jail, I'm the man that I am because I went to jail. Um, the way I was heading, if I didn't go to Rikers Island at 17, I probably would have made it past 17 and messed around and murdered somebody and I'd be locked up right now. Not being able to even attempt to change the lives of any young kids out there. When I look back and I reflect on it, I kind of feel like Rikers Island saved my life in a way. Yeah. And I'm gonna end that here. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Peace.